my name is Susan Graves. I'm a Senior Research Fellow in the Faculty of Education. Um, my research focuses on the changes to the school workforce that have happened in England over the last 10 years, specifically looking at the rise in the number of teaching assistants and higher level teaching assistants over that time and the impact this has had on the professional development of those staff but also on the support for pupils and the impact it's had on the role of the teacher. Um, this research has highlighted some of the issues surrounding uh, TA, HLTA deployment um, such as their preparedness for their role in the classroom, um, the measurement of the impact that they have on teaching for pupils um, and also the strongly gendered uh, genesis of the role and the impact that has on the classroom role and on the both for pupils and for the staff themselves. For example in terms of training development for TAs the this has been largely ad hoc informal work-based learning um, focused on retrospective self-assessment of ability um, which psychologists such as Kruger and Dunning have suggested can lead to very sort of self inflated um, ideas um, using that sort of self-appraisal. Particularly if there's a lack of specialised knowledge, which there often is with these, you know, with these staff. Um, historically, TAs have not had to have any qualifications at all to work in the classroom with, with pupils. They've often graduated from unpaid helpers in the classroom to paid staff. In fact, often there have been mothers who've helped out in the classroom, who've been offered paid positions by head teachers um, without any, you know, any formal qualifications. The consequence of this is that 98.7% of these people, these staff, are female. Um, the rise of the number of TAs in schools has also been linked to the increasing numbers of children with additional needs. Um, who are in the mainstream classroom as part of inclusion policy. An issue is arise when these children, often with very complex educational and learning needs, spend the majority of their time with staff who are the least qualified members of staff in a school often. I mean, albeit, you know, um, well-meaning, but often, you know, the least qualified or the least trained. And this is an issue that's been highlighted not only nationally um, by teams of researchers at the Institute of Education, for example, led by Peter Blatchford, but also internationally in the uh, US by um, G uh, writers such as Jean Greco, in New Zealand writers such as Rutherford, have all pointed to this as a potential human rights issue. At present, I'm working with a colleague from the faculty, Dr Keith Williams, looking at the role of the higher level teaching assistant, which was um, part of the, re the um, remodeling process. We've contacted individuals who um, trained with our faculty between 2005 and 2009 to be HLTAs, um, who work in secondary schools in the northwest of England, to see how the role has developed over that time. Initial findings from our research point to an evidence of the loss of currency of the HLTA status. Um, schools are developing different roles with different titles um, to suit their individual circumstances. There's been a fragmentation of the workforce, in other words, to satisfy local need. Um, the national infrastructure of TA professional development has, has uh, been dismantled and CPD is very much located at the school level and is dependent on local head teachers, for example, deciding what, what they need. Um, over half the respondents in our, in our research haven't had any CPD since 2008, they tell us. The majority of the respondents are working with children with additional needs, um, and 40% of them say that they do whole, they undertake whole class teaching, covering for teachers when they do their planning and preparation time, or when uh, teachers are absent due to illness. What we're seeing is a fundamental alteration of the staff imbalance in schools, in many schools, with the proliferation of locally devised roles, more whole class teaching by um, staff who haven't got qualified teacher status, and a lack of planned professional development for those staff. More worryingly, the support of children with complex educational needs 
is being undertaken, not by specialist teachers often, but by staff who may have only, only have a rudimentary understanding of the multifaceted nature of the support such, such children may require. 